In Elden Ring, those who invade at low level are scum. That's true. But those who would abandon invading at low level are worse than scum. So is there a solution to this made-up problem? Let us begin. I love low-level PvP. I love doing a lot with a little. I love to twink. I love to be twinked against. Nothing sexual. I love min-maxing, and I love getting as strong as I can with as few levels as possible. It's just a lot of fun. Again, nothing sexual. But I know that isn't always a popular mindset, and I have nothing but respect for people who want to invade at higher levels. I also enjoy invading at higher levels. I just love invading. But for me, the real essence of what makes invasion so interesting is when builds aren't finalized. When you can confront a player and their friends without them necessarily having a readied way to respond. To put them on the back foot in a way that demands they acknowledge the power a character can wield with enough preparedness. Invaders in this respect fundamentally alter the difficulty of the game. They take what is otherwise a routine affair and drastically adjust the odds to the best of their ability. Players who understand and appreciate the challenge of the game tend to appreciate invasions. Players who think the game is hard enough on its own tend to hate invasions. But that's really what I think invasions should embody. Catching a character underprepared and forcing them to make impossible decisions. Invaders should feel like an agent, and the host team should feel like whatever the good guys were called in the Matrix. Winning is circumstantial and doesn't always mean killing the invader. Sometimes it's enough just to survive. To that end, twinking is a powerful method to invade. It gives the invader a substantial advantage, assuming the host and their summons have relatively fresh characters and equipment. It also allows the invader to play against any caliber of opponent. And the game sets hard guidelines around invasion ranges and weapon upgrades to help balance what a twink is capable of. The only real criticism I find is that a competent twink has too much of an advantage against unprepared hosts, but I don't really think that's on the invader. Sure, some things in the game don't balance well, and not having a prepped build for PvP is a serious disadvantage, but that's your responsibility as a player to account for and improve. You only get invaded when you participate in multiplayer, so if you and two friends aren't enough to handle an invader, I think that's a perfectly fair problem to be faced with. But that's just how I see it. Personally, I've twinked only a little bit in Elden Ring, though it has made up a good portion of my invasion time. I haven't really invaded that much in Elden Ring, dedicating only a few hundred hours thus far. For reference, I put nearly 3,000 hours into Dark Souls 3, and the vast majority of that time was build making and PvP at low to mid level. But the lack of invasion zones and 6 player multiplayer in Elden Ring have pretty much ruined all my favorite PvP modes. As far as not preferring to invade at higher levels, I don't really like most of the Ashes or high tier spells because I just don't care for how devastating they are. I don't really have a problem with one-shotting a player who hasn't invested vigor, but when you can push a thousand plus damage with ease, it can get a little annoying if you like longer or less sudden fights. Being low level can allow a character's vigor to go a lot farther and make for more interesting fights, at least for me. Where high level gets really annoying is when you deal with the all too common gank of spell spam and nuclear ashes. Even non ganks use them because they work in PvE just as well. You have to come prepared to a meta level invasion, assuming you'll be fighting completed builds who synergize well. That, to me, is the opposite of the experience I want as an invader. As an invader, you're supposed to be the aggressor, and an even remotely competent team puts you on the defensive. Not to say I think that's a bad experience to exist, nor that those hosts shouldn't be able to win their fights. Just that once everyone has a finished build, the balance of invasions tilts heavily in favor of the host team, particularly when they're taking full advantage of the plethora of long-range death lasers the game offers, and I haven't found it quite as engaging. Now, I know a lot of people say you're only good at invading if you invade and stomp ganks at meta level, and anything short of absolute perfection should just throw in the towel, but I don't think that's really in the spirit of the sport. People claiming hosts are defenseless or innocent are completely missing the point. Invading is about attacking someone else for personal gain. It's basically a crime. 
The idea that it should be favorable or fair to the person being crimed ignores what makes crime so cool. You show up and attack someone. The less ready they are, the better for you. If we want preparedness and fairness, we should probably go to the arena or put down dueling signs. Those are conventional matches based around common interest. But invasions aren't duels. They aren't mutual. They're about an invader breaking into your world and you trying to protect your valuables. The game acknowledges this in every respect. It allows you to invade and be invaded. And the game gives a lot of concessions to the invaded player to make them as convenient as possible. The invader is outnumbered. You only get invaded under normal circumstances when you have at least one ally. The invader does not get to keep any of your equipment. There is no looting system like you would find in a lot of MMOs or shooters. The invader does not steal your runes. They cannot actually take anything from you other than your time. You might lose your runes if you can't retrieve them, but they are yours to retrieve. The invader has reduced healing. The host gets to keep all their flasks and the invaders are halved. Hosts can even call the cops on invaders. Invading is the only crime blues respond to. They'll let Yura die a thousand deaths and not lift a finger, but they'll respond in mere moments to a red break-in. So all of those concessions are helpful, right? They should make hosts feel very comfortable. But, speaking generally, unless a host is regularly winning invasions, they aren't going to be happy. And when is a host regularly losing invasions despite all of their advantages? at low level. So I wanted to address that sentiment as honestly as I could. I wanted to make a build that wouldn't take advantage of late game gear or other things an honest host likely wouldn't have access to. I wanted to play on their level. Throw a bone to the hosts with legitimate complaints about the power disparity. To give the hosts who aren't taking advantage of the password system or mewling down gear an honest fight. And I also want to put the idea that you should or shouldn't twink to rest, if for no other reason than to highlight why you should invade however you want. First, I want to get a few distinctions out of the way so we know our parameters. One, a twink uses gear not accessible in the areas they invade. This usually means they have late game gear that a low level player would not conventionally have access to. Two. Low level is any level 50 and below. This one is arbitrary, but for me, 1 to 50 is early game, 51 to 100 is mid game, and 101 and higher is late game. Again, completely arbitrary. 3. Fairness, in this context, means using gear you expect them to be able to use. If they could reasonably have an item through standard progression, so can you. This has nothing to do with tactics or skill level. 4. This is not something I would recommend to first-time invaders. Invading an Elden Ring can be quite difficult at any level, especially if you're not well-versed in PvP. I am a professional and can professionally handle getting my ass kicked. So with those points out of the way, how do we define our invader? For me, I've centered the build around Limgrave. It uses gear only found in Limgrave, as well as only upgrades, such as flasks and talisman pouches, found in Limgrave. I've set the build at level 20 with plus 5 regular and plus 2 special weapons. My flask is upgraded to plus 4, and I have 8 total uses at my disposal. Most levels were invested in Vigor, but I put 2 into Dexterity and 2 into Faith for some additional gear options, namely the Stormhawk Axe and Poison Mist. I have only two talisman slots, one of which is for Radigan's Scar Seal for plus three vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity, which can be found in an Everjail in the Weeping Peninsula, and the other is the Crimson Amber Medallion. Using dual Lord Sworn Straight Swords allows for a modest damage output, and Sacred Blade as the Ash gives a decent flat buff as well as a projectile attack option. The Crimson Hood gives another point in vigor, and the rest of the set is built around getting 51 poise for the occasional tanked hit. I have restricted myself to Limgrave as much as possible, though I did have to enter Liurnia to get the Bloody Finger to invade without limit. Otherwise, I would only be able to invade about two dozen times, and that seemed a little pointless, as invasions are available in Limgrave and the Bloody Finger has no mechanical alteration other than being unlimited. 
At level 20, I can invade anyone from level 18 to 42 with at least plus two regular or plus one special weapon upgrades, ensuring hosts understand those mechanics to some degree and covering the majority of expected Limgrave players. The build is, in no uncertain terms, bad, but it can get the job done. I can fight and defeat a host and their cooperator who are playing through traditionally with relative consistency. That, to me, makes the whole thing a success. But the fights aren't always easy, and the disadvantages are clear. Some fights, anecdotally half or more, are against a host and a much higher level cooperator. These fights I am very likely to lose. I am regularly accosted by Scarlet Rod Dragon Breath, Eclipse Shotel Rundowns, and all manner of Ash and Spell insta-kill nonsense. Every time I run up against one of these encounters, I try my best, but I am reminded that what I'm doing is antithetical to invading. I am deliberately removing my ability to prepare my build for the sake of the host I'm not fighting. It's completely illogical, and I shouldn't be surprised I'm having a hard time. But it can be a lot of fun. I like playing like this because it gives me something to focus on. It gives me a challenge that speaks to my interests. I want to be clear. As much as I love Souls PvP, Elden Ring has removed the vast majority of fun for me. I need this sort of thing to keep myself engaged, to help me keep inspired to make content for you, the good people of YouTube. YouTube pays me now. Or they're going to. I'm sure they're good for it. Sorry for all the ads. But you should not follow in my footsteps. This build is not worth making. It took me almost 10 hours to clear Limgrave and prep the character. For reference, that's how long it took me to complete the entire game with a full build in Dark Souls 3. This game is too f***ing long. The areas are too big. The open world is stupid. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is, well, I made this invader, and it's bad, but it's fun, sometimes. Let's refocus. I did this same sort of build in Dark Souls 3. I made a high wall invader who only used gear from the high wall. It was a lot of fun and worked surprisingly well. I figured the same idea might work in Elden Ring, despite how massive the game is in comparison. I think Limgrave is swell. It's a nice area with a surprising amount of gear available. There's a substantial amount of content to complete before even getting into Stormvale or Liernia. If you kill all the NPCs, you get their stuff. Except Blythe. I was really annoyed when he didn't drop anything upon death. Stupid dog. But D and Bernal did drop their armor, and for that I'm grateful. And spending a lot of time in Limgrave was a refreshing change of pace. I usually make a build in around 40 to 50 hours and am very tired by the end. But instead of rushing through every single task the game sets up, just hanging out doing every little thing I could find in Limgrave gave me a nice change of perspective. Elden Ring is a game I consider to be just too much to be good for remaking builds. Every character needs to do every single storyline and collect every piece of gear, just to make sure you have everything you could possibly need. So playing a character that doesn't have those concerns is nice. It lets you appreciate the little things. But the restrictive nature is still a challenge. Limited flasks make prolonged fights incredibly difficult. A bad exchange or two can easily deplete my recovery options and essentially forces me to avoid directly engaging the blender. Even without quality gear or a proper build, any two players are dangerous. They will circle you and roll away indefinitely, turtling behind their shields and keeping you between them until you engage one. Then, the other will take the opportunity to swing on you. It's a simple tactic, but it's reasonably effective. If you let yourself get chipped down, you can quickly find yourself in a world of hurt. The only real disruption tools in my arsenal are Poison Mist and the Stormhawk Axe. Poison Mist helps to create some breathing room, and poisoning a host who doesn't have any removal options is a nice way to keep track of them and get some gradual damage. The Stormhawk Axe works great, though. It's basically a spin to win that, so long as you're not reckless, you can easily stomp hosts who haven't leveled Vigor. But that's one of those aforementioned Ashes of War that make me not love high-level PvP designed to do the same at low level, so I try not to use it unless warranted. It'd be one thing if hosts bothered to level Vigor, but they don't. That means, otherwise, most fights are an uphill battle, and you're pretty much on your own. The enemies of Limgrave are not particularly effective at damaging hosts, 
Their AI is timid, and they are relatively sparse. The ones that can do real damage tend to hit you as much as they hit the host. Looking at you, omen in the courtyard. All in all, it's a challenge build for PvP. It's about getting the most out of a fight and giving your opponent as much of a chance as you can passively manage. And uniquely, it's the sort of build that only works at low level. Once a character leaves the first area, all bets are off as to what they have at their disposal. You can't set the same sort of limitation with the same consistency. And even when you can, as I said before, you can't know the target doesn't have other options, especially when summoning gets involved. The host isn't being dishonest by password summoning their meta-level friend, but they are gaining a pretty sizable advantage that the game does a half-assed job of balancing. If they want to add in a second high-level friend, it just means all bets are off. But without a proper build, invading at low level is asking to be destroyed by jolly cooperators who are all too thrilled to stomp out an easy 3v1 kill. Trust me, with my fair build, I've experienced more than my fair share. And again, the build is fun. For me. Sometimes. You shouldn't do this. You're better than this. Elden Ring is a game about space lasers and becoming Super King. It gives you a horse to ignore the vast world they created and then takes it away when you need it most. Horses can't fit inside or underground, you see. It's a game about pushing forward and completing a lot of chores. It's about getting to the Erd Tree to climb a mountain to go back to the Erd Tree and letting your girlfriend either die or leave you on the way. There are lots of ways to address those things, but at the end of the day, Elden Ring invasions at high level are centered around taking obscene amounts of damage and trying your best to get them before they get you. So if you don't want to deal with all that, invading an Elden Ring might not be for you unless you want to try at a lower bracket. In that case, go ahead and try this build. It's terrible, but sometimes rewarding. When you can showcase your build to a host and their phantom and fight them in a close match, everyone swinging for the fences with whatever they can muster, it's a real treat. It feels like Dark Souls. You remember Dark Souls from the before times? But otherwise, when you fight two overleveled phantoms and a gear-muled host, You'll remember why it's okay to twink. You'll remember that maximizing your build's effectiveness is part of the game. You'll remember that invasions aren't fair and that everyone should embrace that. You'll remember that it's kill or be killed by any means necessary. And to the hosts who hate when they get stomped by an OP build, I'm curious if this is the sort of build that you want to be invaded by. I'm too far removed from being a typical host to have any meaningful insight into what I might appreciate, so I'd like to know if getting invaded by a build playing at your level means anything, or if my gesture is completely lost to the greater animosity of invasions in general. If so, please let me know. I'm doing this for you, you ungrateful little shits. That's it for this video. If you like the build idea, or you have your own sentiments about low-level invasions, please leave a comment down below. I think low-level invasions are something that don't get a lot of attention because they aren't necessarily the most flashy PvP, but for me, they've always been where invasions shine. And if you liked my commentary or just enjoy this sort of content, please consider liking and subscribing. I really appreciate community engagement, and as bad as it can be for my mental stability, I do read every single comment, so please be gentle and constructive. Thank you for watching.